that stuff. Uh, it was it was a much simpler time, and uh, yet the thing that strikes me over and over again is these were really, really smart engineers that designed these things. These were the good guys. These are the guys that now would be working for you know JPL or something, doing some really high end stuff that's just amazing to see. The railroads paid them good money. They were proud of what they did. They had a tradition that went back for generations, and uh, it was a you know, it was such a pervasive thing. The railroads. I'll bet you in this room, we take any family tree here and shake it hard enough, and a railroad will fall out somewhere. You know? it, was a, it was a big part of our world. Uh, not so much anymore in, in ways that you see directly. Still, we're highly dependent on rail traffic for freight. You know, you've got to go to Germany to see what a train really ought to be for passengers. Japan, dare I say it, China. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're bringing back our little piece of history so that your grandkids can learn about that piece of history from a very tangible icon of an important part of our world that to them is just a few paragraphs in a history book they didn't want to read anyway. Here's a second question for you. Now, I'm just going through what I think I remember. I think that my Lionel 29 engine was a 2920. Is that likely true? The 2900s were named for their first one, which was 2900. They numbered them sequentially. 2929 was the last built. Uh, in fact, 2926 is the youngest surviving of that series. So we literally have an almost brand new engine. It only has a million <laughs> miles on it. <laughs> the million miles on the railroad probably weren't as hard on it as 50 years in the city park. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your ETA for run? Um, we would like to run in about a year and a half, and we've been negotiating with everybody in his dog. We don't own the rails, we end with X. City of Albuquerque, City of Las Vegas, New Mexico, BNSF, Rail Runner, uh, and MDOT. Oh, those are lovely guys to work with. I didn't say that. And, uh, oh, if you have one passenger behind a locomotive in this country, one. You have to have $285 million worth of liability coverage. You can't afford that. Millions of dollars. You can't even buy that in this country. You have to go to the Bahamas. So I asked the smart guys at NMDOT, I said, well, what about the rail runner? They said, oh, we're the state of New Mexico. We self-indemnify. So, <laughs> Thank you. Pay your taxes. Uh, how do you get around that? You go as an Amtrak extra. Amtrak has the policy. You pick up the first $20 million of liability and coverage. It's only going to cost you 50000 a year. Uh, which will be factored into the ticket prices. We think we can run uh, a consist from the Alvarado Transportation Center on a Saturday morning north to Las Vegas, New Mexico, through Glorieta Pass, through Laney, uh, probably water in Glorieta, just to make sure we can make it to Las Vegas, but you never run dry. The biggest sin in the world on a steam locomotive is to, is to use all your water. Do not do that. Um, it will explode or you have to shut it down and then you've got a dead weight on the rails and everybody's unhappy. Uh, so we'll water at Glorietta and then go to Las Vegas. Everybody off, 500 people have been added to the economy of the city of Las Vegas. They have two porta potties at the Amtrak station. <laughs> they have no city transportation. They have 550 hotel rooms, only 25 of which are within convenient walking distance. The old Castaneda Hotel, which is being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The same guy who rebuilt the uh, the Harvey House in Winslow, and he's doing a nice job, but it's only 25 rooms. So we got to have an in-town, you know, circulating bus. Uh, we got to have more potties. We got to have the fire department and the mayor's office on our side because we need their security people. Uh, all the people with cameras will want to stand in the hot zone on the track waiting for the Amtrak train to hit them while they're taking pictures of our choo-choo. We got to be shoved off to one side gently. Uh, we. We'll max out all the restaurants in town. There's a couple of little museums. I mean, it's an afternoon's worth of stuff to do in Las Vegas, New Mexico. It's a very cool piece of our economic history, but you've got to go back to the territorial days to understand that. Oh, wait a minute. You don't like Las Vegas that much? No problem. For a small extra fee, you can ride with us from Las Vegas to French. Anybody in French? You, you, you would have trouble picking it up. 
French New Mexico is a location on the map where the railroad, the BNSF railroad, has a Y where they used to turn coal trains. It's still oh, functional. Wow. Because that's the first place north of Albuquerque our locomotive can be turned around. So we got to run 75 miles up to French from Las Vegas, turn around, and run back to Las Vegas. We get there in the early evening, spend the night in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. I'm probably, if I can't get to Castaneda, I'd go to the plaza. It's a beautiful town. Mm -hmm. Been there? Mm -hmm. It's a cool place. Yeah. Next, they took the Oakville building with it, you know that. And all the decor in there came from the old La Fonda. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, it's done a nice job. Mm -hmm. Or Motel 6. But wait, but it's not just you guys that bought a ticket. What about the 2,000 automobiles that chased us up I-25 from Albuquerque? State police are going to have a field day uh, because everybody will want to stop on the bridge and take pictures of the locomotive going underneath. And blah, 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 things like that. Uh, Sunday morning, out of your hotel room, have breakfast, back on the train, and we'll come back down to Albuquerque on Sunday. Why Saturday, Sunday? Railroader. They hardly use the tracks between here and Santa Fe on Saturday and Sunday. It's much too busy during weekdays. And Amtrak's not a big deal. There's three going one way and four going the other way once a day. So uh, dodging them is just a matter of finding the signs. Getting an MDOT to help, they have to certify all the bridges. They've already told us there's one that they won't let us go over faster than 10 miles an hour. OK. We'll slow down over the 10 miles an hour. Uh, we think we can sell these tickets on the order of 200 to $400 for the round trip. Those are some national French if you'd like to know. And you fit under all the coal marks. Pardon? You will fit under all the coal marks. Yeah, it turns out that the plates for, uh, uh, it, it fit under all those culverts in 1944, and none of them have changed heights significantly. So, yeah, we, we get under everything. That's not the problem. The, the real problem was, will the bridges take the load? Mm -hmm. And uh, an engineer has to go out and bless each bridge for our weight. So we had to be able to tell them how much weight was on each axle and how far apart they were and that sort of thing. There also, there's one place where they say we're, they won't let us go across with uh, more than a half a tank in the tender of water. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be a problem. You can burn off a couple thousand gallons. Do you have intentions of registering the home office outside? Uh, we've already talked with them at some length. Nobody's really interested in an old dead locomotive, but uh, when it's running, these things uh, can be occasionally and shamelessly employed to be in movies. Love to. Actually, the movies are good business. Uh, we have a guy, well, we, we made money on several movies. My favorite, anybody watch Let Me In? You saw Let Me In? Yeah, it's a teenage vampire movie. Here's a woman with a classical education. <laughs> At the end of the movie, there's a little short scene where the vampire and the girl are in the passenger car, and it's at sunset or maybe it's at sun up, I don't know, but the car's rocking along, and it's like right at the end of the movie. A little clip of a scene. I guess sunset, sun up is important for vampires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, uh, we had a stored passenger car on our site. The movie company from that movie paid us $7,000 to babysit them for a day while they rocked the passenger car <laughs> with jacks and shone lights through the window and waved branches in front of the windows and film the scenes. You know, they eat good at movies. Our babysitting room, at 11 o'clock, they came around and said, oh, we're so sorry. The caterer is not serving breakfast anymore. Would you mind lunch? Lunch? Uh. <laughs> so for 10 hours work for eight guys, we've made $7,000. Uh, a hot steam locomotive is going to cost you more than $7,000. It'll be worth it. So yes, we're thinking about that already. And I'm curious about your fundraising. I mean, this is the magnitude. I left that all out, didn't I? That, yeah, but um, that's got to be a. Yeah, I'm, if you would like to join our organization yeah. and consider being the chair raising, or the, the fundraising chair, uh, I'm tired of the damn job. Uh, we, we do everything you can think of. We ask people to use Smith's Community Rewards Program, Smile Amazon, sign up as a member, make donations. Uh, we have. Uh, we approach every philanthropic organization within sight that might give us money. For the first time in 10 years, Albuquerque Community Foundation this year gave us $8,000. Uh, may not get a dime next year. Uh, BNSF on a couple of occasions has given us money and on a couple of occasions has told us to go away. But 
you would think this is their legacy. This is where they got their start. You know, they should be proud of this thing. Not really. They, they'd be 